do you remember ages ago? Or I mean, ages, not ages ago, maybe last year sometime. I remember saying that um, the playgraves are probably a good indication of how the scene will end up being when things reopen. And everyone was like, no, man, the playgraves are not. Everyone's going to be like, we're going to be local and we're going to promote all local talents and people won't be able to travel because of the virus and Brexit and all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. But I really did think that playgraves were a really bad omen as to how the scene would rebound after the, you know, this tragic time that we've been living under this pandemic. And this lineup that I'm about to show you is perfect proof of it. Because there was, of course, there was this adage that because we were living in a post-pandemic world, that people would be restricted in their movements. It would kind of necessitate for promoters and event bookers and venues to maybe tap into their local community and scene more, as opposed to going out and reaching out to the big, obvious brands and names and collectives to go and fill up their lineups. Because as great as a place as the UK is for electronic music and variety and all that malarkey, we do sometimes get a little bit complacent in our efforts to fill up lineups and we just go to the easiest thing that we can do because for as many djs and artists that we do have we also have just as many customers and kind of potential clients and potential punters that are more than willing to spend a hundred pound plus per night at a particular venue so certain people are more prone to go out and just book the sven vars and ricardo villalobos's get them to play you know or ricardo villalobos and craig which is wherever it may be get them to play back to back for seven hours charge you for 30 quid and just kind of keep it moving right and kind of laugh your way all the way to the bank but that obviously negates the ability for people like myself who are kind of like on the lower rung. And then, of course, you've got other DJs on the middle rung and other DJs maybe on the upper upper middle rung as well who are kind of suffering from that because it doesn't necessarily give the opportunity to build a name in the UK, to get a bit of head. Not to give you a head, but I take that back. Maybe you get some head in the process, but it doesn't give them opportunity to get a bit of headway, right? They kind of have to languish around, either doing their own festival, doing their own party, or sometimes going out and playing in other regions first, getting a name out there, and then coming back. So, this festival called Riverside Festival that's taking place in Glasgow. Again, I have no information about the place. I don't know if they've got a lot of history with Berlin and they're connected with parts of you know in europe and whatnot i don't know the whole story behind it but it's really interesting to see a very prominent festival that's taking place in scotland right um and it's taking place in scotland what's the date here it's taking place in scotland in september so you know further down the line gives an opportunity to other countries to maybe get their act together has an entire sunday dedicated to a who's who of berlin techno hipsters and influencers and shit that's who is on that list. And I find it hilarious when the whole idea behind, you know, um, or the, the impression that you got from certain people within the industry was, like, oh, no, things are going to change. They're going to start promoting. No, they're not. They're just going to go back to normal. And that's the issue that I have with all this stuff is that I don't have an issue with these guys doing this. I just have an issue with people thinking with ro or looking at things with rotinated glasses. What ends up, what, what actually has to happen in the ideal world, in my opinion, is that you should see and recognize the world for exactly as it is right corrupt messed up people look for the easiest option or the easiest route out the path of least resistance all that mad good stuff and you should try and make a way for yourself right again it's hard to do you can't go out and just open up your own fabric and shit but if you're able to do your own night if you're able to set up your own collective put together your own little online streaming show wherever it may be to present the people that you feel need to be given a voice or a platform do so you have to do it because these other guys aren't going to do it never going to do it because they only seen the money they're only seeing the easy option out they're only seeing the numbers on social regardless of what they're looking at what metrics they're only going to do it their way and i think sometimes this need for people to kind of shame these places to do the things that they want to do sometimes backfires because what they end up doing is they end up just putting up a lineup of people that aren't necessarily ready to play that sort of stage just because they come from a, a particular racial background and they end up kind of doing more damage than good or they end up just ignoring the people and end up leaving everyone with a sour taste in their mouth and no one's happy in the long run so this should be a clear indication that nothing and i repeat nothing nada is changing in the electronic music space when things reopen it's going to be the same lineups in the same places uh, the only way it's not going to be the same is if the venue or the location makes a concerted effort to change things as we've seen with print works they've got a redacted lineup which i still have a sneaky suspicion it's still going to be the same old people playing there Amelia lens and co i still think so um fabric obviously made a really big um hoopla about you know making sure they don't put out a lineup and getting people on there that are local but again i still have sneaky suspicion it'll be the same old people playing in those kind of places 
if that's the case, you have you kind of owe it to yourself and your community and the people you represent to put on your own night and to throw your own parties and to do your own thing. Because if ever there's a time to really make a mark, it'll be now. There's a bit of a low in the scene. People are desperate for gigs. Well, this sort of good stuff. People are desperate for a good night out to have a bit of fun. This is the time to go out there and do it. I guess maybe in 2019 it'll be a lot more difficult to get new punters to go and give your label night a chance. But nowadays, I think more people are prone and open to go to a label night of a label they have no idea even existed prior to the night they went to and to give it a chance and maybe to bump into a new musical hero of theirs because as you can see from this riverside festival that's taking place from friday the 5th of september until the 5th they have an entire sunday dedicated to a who's who or people that play on um hall is that hall have you pronounced the, the radio station in berlin this is all the same people that play on it maybe minus Emily lens you've got Emily lens nine uh nine 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 live you've got uh Ba Bambunua, have you pronounced that? Dax Shea, back to back with Kabosi, Ilan Alien, Hector Oaks, Ida, um, Lisa Loft, Paula Temple, Quail, back to back with Aisha, Slam, Hybrid Live, and VTSS. This is basically a, a Grease Moon lineup, right? Playing in the middle of Glasgow. Why? You're telling me they couldn't find um, a lot more kind of UK, Glasgow y type people that they could go and play with? that they could kind of promote dare i say people from flipping wales like do you honestly think there's no one from the republic of ireland um northern ireland that could play in this sort of lineup don't get me wrong the le the rest of the lineup is a little bit more uk centric you can see maybe looking at it from just you know from afar there's a lot more uk people there but still that lineup there on sunday is a joke bro like that makes no sense doesn't it it doesn't make any sense really and like i said that's why i said in the long run these places are going to keep doing what they want to do they're going to keep making the same mistakes. Not even mistakes. They're going to just keep doing what they want to do because they want to do it. So you owe it to yourself and your community to go and put on your own night because these motherfuckers aren't going to give you the opportunity to do so. Um, it just made me laugh thinking about it. I, was like, I knew it, man. I knew those play graves were a good indication of how the scene would bounce back when things reopened. Because it didn't make any sense. Why would these play graves, like even, you look at something like even like a, a possession techno, right? They're a really small kind of DIY, you know, techno collective out in France. Why were they booking somewhere like a million lens? It doesn't make any sense, right? They're kind of the kids are just raving out in the middle of a car park somewhere, going crazy. Why would a million lens be the first person you go and drag, you go and pull from? Why? Because it sells tickets, right? You're gonna get the people that are gonna turn up anyway to your fest for your warehouse thing. You're kind of scared that you're not gonna make your money back. You're doing it during a pretty, you know, illegal time to throw a party. It's legal, but not really. You know, morally, maybe not the right thing. So you're gonna make sure you're trying to get your money back. You're gonna try, you're gonna make sure you get your money's worth. Same with this post-COVID world. Post-COVID world, if you're a promoter and you're putting on an event, there's a lot of reward, but there's also a lot of risk because everyone's going to be putting on a rave. Even I'm thinking about getting back in a promoting game. So everyone's putting parties. Everyone's organizing stuff. So you're more what you're more kind of prone to probably go and book the bait person because you know they're going to sell tickets as opposed to booking some local, you know, local label, local collective, local DJ, whatever it may be. All this sort of like, you know, um, stuff people were talking prior is just all all lip service really when it comes down to it you got an entire sunday which is like i said it essentially looks like a who's who of people that play at grease Mueller. maybe with the exception of maybe a media lens it's absolutely wild absolutely wild but hey what do i know